dealing with uh, false rape cases is very painful for me to deal with as a lawyer. I fight a lot of these cases. I consult way more many people on these cases. And what I see is just heart-wrenching. I do a lot of matrimonial law. I do a lot of other kind of cases, false cases as well. But false rape cases are something that truly wrecks the man's life. The reason why is in matrimonial law, you know, there are not a lot of arrests happen, especially if you are smart about it. If you play the right steps, you will not be arrested. People are arrested only if they make huge blunders. False rape cases, it's just an absolute travesty. I was just a couple of days ago consulting this man. The lady says that two years prior, this man took me to a hotel and raped me. And I fell into depression. Here are my depression hospital records. And now after two years, I come and I file this rape case against this man. And I say that this man raped me and he should be punished. To a certain extent, I say that, you know, one thing is that people claim, right? Oh, how you say false allegation, let that case be defended. How do you know that it's a false case? It could very well be a true case. The problem is the proof that is there. The boy says that he applied for anticipatory bail. He showed the entire proof. The day that the girl says this forcible sexual intercourse, this rape happened, there are several chats of romance between them. There are several photos of them standing together, hugging each other, smiling, wide-eyed. And even text messages of you know the girl and the boy after they have gone back home. So how do you say that this is undeniable? Oh, this, you know, this does not mean it could be, it could still be rape. I mean, anything could be, you know, I could be getting raped right now. You know, you never know. But in a, in a case like this one, where there is proof, where there are WhatsApp chats, right? Some nonsense like, oh, my depression records come. And, and the boy, he tells me he, I, he applied for uh, anticipatory bail before the sessions court gets rejected applies for anticipatory bail before the high court gets rejected files an appeal an slp especially petition against that before the supreme court three courts completely disregard the whatsapp chats and keep saying oh the girl went into depression she there are there are reports of therapy my god she was having therapy for several years since prior to this so-called incident as well what do we make of it? No judge wants to look at any of it. And now, I was talking to this man and, 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 and obviously we understood that he now has no other option but to surrender, to spend time in jail, which is what this complainant wants. They had a relationship or, you know, a hookup, whatever you want to call it. And now she says, oh, my feelings were... They don't care how your feelings are getting hurt. When is the other way around? You know why? I have a case where the girl broke up after having the man spent, you know, spend several lakh rupees on her, right? Buy me this, buy me that, spend this on me, take me here, take me there, do this, do that. Then she breaks up. And then in a moment of, you know, Bollywood inspired Romeo romance, he just goes and uh, talks to her where he encounters her somewhere out in public. He just goes up to his ex-girlfriend and says, can we talk about this? And next day, she registers an FIR of stalking against this man. This man, and this this FIR was registered around, I think, three years ago. And this case is going on. And we're representing the man in the case. And hopefully, we'll be able to get an acquittal for him in light of all the facts that are there. However, you know, coming back to false rape cases, as sad as it is, and as bad as the system is right now, where we treat women as children whose actions are considered to be the acts of a child. There are no responsibilities uh, attached to the actions of a woman. Whatever she says, oh, I was, this happened. Okay, this happened. I'm a victim in this way. Great. I was a victim in my marriage. Great. It has just become insane. However, there are few things that you can do to get out of this situation. And that's why I say, you know, it's a bad situation out there, right? Indeed it is. But does that mean that now I also have to fall prey to it become a martyr and then maybe talk about it on a YouTube video or on Twitter with men's rights movements. Honestly, I don't think so. I told this man, there are several things that he could do, right? And I don't know if he went through with them or not, but I've seen so many people make this big mistake. If you have a 
person file a false rape case on you it is not enough to just apply for anticipatory bail and it's a nuanced point i've on other occasions mentioned that if there is a false case against you you should not immediately apply for anticipatory bail but i say if it's a rape case if the fir is registered you have no other option you will have to apply for anticipatory bail however applying for anticipatory bail by itself is not enough and i'll explain why anticipatory bail is filed before the sessions court the police who are investigating this offense the police station right and the concerned investigating officer in that police station they are always super by uh, supervised by the court of the magistrate not the sessions court where the anticipatory bail is being applied the biggest mistake that a lot of people in, you know in 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 facing these cases they make is that they will apply for anticipatory bail they will attach all their proof with this anticipatory bail as they should however one big mistake that they don't do is that they expect they expect that the sessions court is going to instruct the police to investigate into all of the evidences which have been attached with the bail application this is my proof these are my chats this is the video this is the photos of me and her together you know get them verified by the by the investigating officer my lord and this is the problem i would say one out of 10 times just 10% of the times the sessions court takes it upon itself to inquire about the truth to figure out what actually transpired 10% of the times i've seen statistically with hundreds of these cases that i've consulted on and many dozens of of uh, bails that i've argued you know and, and and other things that i've done in these kind of matters 10% of the times the court will say all right the investigating officer should should investigate and even then it's not necessary that the police will cooperate in this person's case he attaches these screenshots these chats and the police says we have not been able to verify these chats sorry now <laughs> what do you what do you mean have not been he has submitted his phone he has submitted but no we have not been here because the police can just shrug their shoulders shrug their sh and and the cops know that if you file if you you know if you just say oh, i'm not verified the judge is not going to pull them up and say what do you mean by not verified what explain this session court judges don't do it and that's why what we do is we move an application for monitoring of investigation before the magistrate court we also move an application under section 91 criminal procedure code because the law on this is exactly not clear there are very few uh, cases and i just know me having done it i don't know any other person who does this file applications under section 156 clause 3 of the criminal procedure code for monitoring of investigation filing an application under section 91 of the criminal procedure code for calling of records say these thing you know the the contents of these applications are pretty much the same what we do is we file these applications and we tell the magistrate right not the session court a separate application before the magistrate which has supervisory jurisdiction over this police station this investigating officer and we say to the court that there is this fir which has been registered against me right and uh, i need the i have presented my proof before the police and the police are not investigating into my version of events right the police are supposed to be unbiased they're not supposed to only put on record the complainant's version of events and so i need the intervention of this court to get verified uh you know a certain whether my proofs are valid or not whether my version of events is valid or not you know uh, cctv footage call detail records these are all things that only the police can get you as a as a private individual cannot get at all you expect that the sessions court will have the police look into it 90% of the times it's not going to happen magistrate courts we've had a reasonable amount of success in fact on most of the occasions when we move this specific application right for monitoring and investigation calling of records the police themselves submit their status reports and say you know what yes we did investigate we did look into this and we'll be including these things in the charge sheet so it has two benefits in fact getting anticipatory bail much becomes much more easier and we've done that for clients and we've I mean, we've got an anticipatory bail for clients and also if you in the future consider going for quashing of the charge sheet or maybe seeking a discharge before the before the court it becomes far more easier because now your proof is also part of the charge sheet whereas if you do not move these applications before the magistrate court and it's just sessions court okay let's say best case scenario you get anticipatory bail from the sessions court or the high court or the supreme court of india then what is the case done you will then spend the next 10 years of your life going to court once every one month or two month or three months and fighting out this case you know it's 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 a terrible nightmare your case will not be quashed because the court says the law of the land says that material which is there in the charge sheet only can be considered and perhaps the the case diary of the police officer but we will not go beyond the the charge sheet and the case diary there is some concept of sterling proof but it's a whole 
you know, a whole lot of garbage. I don't really want to get into that. Very useless. So, you know, it's it's one thing to say, you know, there's nothing to, you know, there's, there, you know, in, in India, you're done. It's nothing. There's not like that. There are a lot of things that can be done. It is, of course, indeed a sad state of affairs. But we can do our own bit to at least save our own skin when facing these kind of situations. Let's just not sit and wonder and, and, and hope that, you know, and this man, I mean, you know, goes to jail and he asked me, how much time will I spend in jail? And I said, surrender, move your, you know, surrender come bail application, try to get bail as soon as possible, right? Another man I consulted a couple of days ago, his, I mean, you know, didn't consult him, he was in jail. His family consulted me and they said that, you know, we moved the bail application, the date's been given for next week and we've been told that definitely next week we'll get bail. And I told them, you can't have long dates in most of these matters because if you take one long date and you agree to one long date, the judge will happily give another long date. And that is just another sad reality of life. And, and they contacted me a couple of days later and yes, again, the matter's been adjourned and then again adjourned. And this was around, I think, a month ago and the person is still in jail for some, you know, uh, you know, uh, again, some false promise of marriage nonsense. It's just horrible, horrible how men are spending months in jail, months, years in jail because of these, you know, false allegations. And even if someone says, oh, you let it be proved, there is no, there is no, you know, uh, light at the end of the tunnel. Even if you get an acquittal, do you think that, and you're able to prove with concrete proof that you are innocent, that this was a false allegation. Do you think the complainant lady goes to jail? Not really. We we you know we try our best, and most of the times we've seen, you know, we've we've just seen failure in trying to after getting an acquittal, trying to get the you know some perjury or malicious prosecution punishment against the lady. It is truly a sad state of affairs. But at least get your ass out of this trouble. Do not be the one to to be stuck in the system, to be you know to be in jail for several days, weeks, months, maybe even years. Take the right steps at the preliminary stage. And and just be careful and also anticipatory bail, regular bail, push things quickly. Do not let the judge give a long date. Do not let the investigating officer come and say, oh, I didn't receive a copy of the bail application. I am, you know, my, my, my FSL report is still yet to come. My, you know, the, the investigating officer is on leave today. He's on duty today. Some other person's come. You know, the steno is not there. The judge is on leave. Some bakwas. There are all of these challenges which will come up. But you need to remember that you need to push things quickly. Otherwise, liberty is at stake. In fact, it is so horrendous. We've taken this thing for so granted in India. I was reading a couple of days ago this article about this man who faced a false rape allegation and he spent one day in jail, right? And they made such, like, this article was written, this man faced a day in custody and while, I mean, you know, because he was under arrest and then the police uh, interrogated the girl and her versions were not consistent and that's why after about 24 hours in custody, the man was released. And then the woman went to jail, I believe. And the man said in an interview, I still feel traumatized. I'm not able to fit in back with society. I have trouble getting a job. I have trouble, uh, you know, having a romantic relationship with a woman. This is the, the pain of a man who spent 24 hours in jail on a false accusation. Imagine spending weeks, months, maybe a year in jail on a false rape allegation. Just imagine how much more magnified the pain of this man is.